Hey everybody, welcome back to Southern Adder on Deck Outdoors. Today we're out on the deck. Uh, we are doing some work on it. We have, uh, just this earlier this summer, put new flooring on. And now we're working on the railing. And we wanted to put a cable system in to make it, uh, make the view better. Uh, we had spindles, vertical spindles before. But uh, I looked up the cost of cable systems and boy, they're expensive. So what I came up with is sort of the redneck way, uh, cheap cape way maybe to do it. Um, it's about, not really cheap cheap, but uh, about half the price of the railing systems that you see, like Lowe's and so forth. So we'll get right on to it. I'm gonna take you over and show you my sample piece that I made up. All right, everybody, here's my sample piece. This is something I made up in the garage one evening to see how things would work. And this is how I'm gonna anchor the cable. Uh, it's just a straight eighth inch stainless steel cable with a crimp on it here. Uh, loop with a thimble on it. And some of you may recognize this pin. It's a tractor, uh, I don't know what they're officially called, three point hitch pin. But take out the loop of them. And it makes a good anchor. So we, this is going to be the anchor point. And over here is the tension. And again, that is simply a six inch carriage bolt with a hole drilled through it. Oh, that's not a good sample. Oh well, this is my first attempt. And the cable attached to it. So once I get them all attached, I can just tighten this up and it pulls it tight and hopefully pulls it all the way into the uh, post here so you don't see it. But that's gonna be a game of chance, I think. Anybody need some shower curtain rings? <laughs> so these are what we're after. One down. This is grinding down the threads to get a flat spot on each side and you're drilling a hole through. Just want to try to make them parallel roughly. I like to do a spark making outside. Alright, okay, I got a bunch more to go. So we'll move on to something else. All right, for this part of the uh, tensioner, we have to drill an eighth inch hole here for the wire to go through. This can be a little fussy trying to get a hole through there. Especially with you guys in the way. Somewhere about in there. through it. We're going to be working on the section behind me today. I have already completed the opposite end section to give you an idea what it looks like. These are all the tractor pins. They look a little goofy but they work. And this is the other side of the stairs is the tension side uh, for this section here between the short section. And you can see uh, the tightening of these carriage bolts tightens up the, where's my hand? There it is, tightens up the wires. You can play a song. <laughs> uh, occasionally I missed one and didn't get sucked all the way into the post. I may replace those, I don't know. 
depends how much they annoy me. But it seems to be good and half the price of the uh, commercial systems. Oh, and I'll come back later on and just cut these off with a cutting wheel. But I should also say, take it on a project list like this, be sure to consult your codes guy. Make sure you got your spacing right. And with these cable systems, you have to have a correct tension too, so they don't uh, move up and down and flex uh, with pressure. So always check with your codes guy. All right, I'm off the side of the deck here, standing on a very OSHA approved plank on a couple ladders. <laughs> it's pretty stable actually. Uh, so we're gonna get going here. Uh, I'm gonna put the bottom one in and then maybe bring you back when the rest are done. And I should say, this is not a how to, just a how I did it. So do whatever you think is best. Coordinate codes. Okay, so you put your wire through first. Put your crimp on. Just slide it back out of the way. Grab your thimble. And then here I leave extra wire. And I found the easiest way. So use a couple pair of vice grips, needle nose types. You can do this with your hands, and I've done it, but uh, after a while, your fingers get pretty sore. Just get a little tighter. And clamp one end in. And then what I usually do is take the other pair, bend it around the thimble, and somewhere around that's just past the apex of the thimble. Put the other one on. That's like your way up, see if we get on this side. There we go. Just keeps it tighter to the thimble. It gives you a little bit of length to work with as well. But so I just uh, slide the clamp on, bend this down there a little bit. I got a little bit of a tail there, but that's okay. And this is always the awkward part. Try and do this, hold it and get in the crimper and crimp at the same time. And all that does is pinch the crimp against the cable. My first thought was to use those uh, U bolts uh, with saddles on them. There's just not enough room. You have to make a very big hole in post to have it disappear. In. And on the last crimp, I've gone down a size. So that it really crimps it. Puts a good crimp on it. I had a couple of them pull out earlier using the recommended size. Alright. We're gonna have a little tangle of wire here. Okay. Take these guys off. He's all on. Okay, cut off this extra. Take one of our tractor pins. These happen to fit in these symbols nicely. You can put them in this way and give them a twist. Give them a twist. Maybe have a pair of pliers handy. You can twist them so that the flat side of this is going. Uh, I got it going the wrong way. I go 180. The camera always makes me screw up. <laughs> Okay, move it around there so it's roughly centered. And then pull the cable through here. Hope you guys can see this part. It's a little tight here up against the building. Okay. Oh, I leave no space. There we go. Okay. Try to keep it vertically. And that cable gets held in by that anchor. I'm just going to string this on down to the other end. The middle post here is just a hole straight through, a quarter inch hole. And now let's see, now we'll go down the other end. I think I gotta move you guys. All right. Okay, so we got the wire coming through from the middle post and our tensioner. Uh, so we just drive the tensioner through. Yeah. 
Well, first we go get our 3 8 drill bit because we never drilled the top hole all the way through. Now that we got our 3 8 inch hole drilled, we can tap this through on the back side. This is friction. And give yourself some wiggle room. I'll try to get an eighth inch wire through an eighth inch hole. Let me turn this around there. Okay. I'll come over to your side here. There we go. See, I left plenty of extra cable here. Now, the hard part of this whole process is determining how much slack you need to take up. You uh, still have everything disappear into there, into the hole. And it's a crapshoot, really. A guessing game. What I've been doing is holding it here and pulling it. See how much I don't think that's gonna be enough. So to tighten that, I'm moving about an inch, inch and a half. I think a little bit more. Yeah, let's try that. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> and here's where I forgot. Now you put your crimp on first. I'm sure somebody out there is laughing. Just after I finish telling you to put the crimp on first. Now I gotta try to get through that darn little hole again. Didn't want to drill any bigger just to save the strength of the bolt. Alright. So that has about, I don't know, an inch and a half of pull. This part is really eyeballing and guessing. It's just a matter of crimping it. And again, I go down to the next size below just to get a really good crimp on it. Let's see if we can get rid of some of this extra wire. Now you can either use the nut back here to pull all the way through, which I did the first couple times. It was easier to just tap it in there. Put the screwdriver until it gets down in there a ways, and then use the nut. And you need two wrenches here because you don't really don't, really don't want the bolt to spin. I'm going to hold the bolt and then tighten it with the other one, tighten the nut with the other one. But I have to fast forward this part because it uh, takes a little while, a quarter turn at a time. There we go, it's getting there. Maybe I can turn you, bring you guys around here and see. Yeah. Okay. I'll do this one-handed. I don't think the bolt's gonna spin, so... It's just a matter of tightening the nut. I have the bolt is spinning, oh well. Until the cable feels good. That feels loose. I'm going to put you back down here. Oh, 
new Milwaukee drills can be used for camera mounts. All right, well, let's get in the ballpark. I'll get the rest in and then tighten them all at once. And once the rest are in, uh, you have to tighten them again anyways because they tend to pull a little bit each other and loosen up some. Um, so we'll get those in and I'll bring you back at the end. All right, everybody, that uh, section is done. As you can see, it came out pretty good. Probably hard to see the wires in the camera, but uh, in the end where we tension them, all of them got sucked into the post so you don't see the tensioner. So I guess practice makes perfect. But I still have more to do. The main length here. Uh, it took about two hours to do the length I just showed you. So another two hours for that one. The, uh, I do have to go down to Trek Supply get more of those linchpins. And if you're looking for linchpins at the Utica, New York Trek Supply, good luck. <laughs> Someone might have bought, bought them all. All right, everybody, uh, it's next day or so. And I have the long side all wired up and tensioned. And on this end, I have the, oh, whatever you want to call it, the top cap, top rail installed. Can't do this side until I figure out what to do with the stairs. And I have to uh, figure out the railing, the railing for the stairs, but that's going to be for another day. So. And it's been lab tested. All right, guys, I guess that's about it for this video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends and all the other good stuff. And we'll see you again next time.